Hello everyone. So today we're going to go over section 6.1, exploring the graphs of polynomial functions. Before we look at the graphs of polynomial functions, we will look at some properties of uh, polynomial functions that will help us determine what the behavior of the graphs will be. So we'll begin with degree and the constant. The degree of a polynomial function is the value of the highest exponent in the function. So if you look at example 1 here, 1a, f of x is equal to x squared plus 4x minus 5. So the degree will be the highest power of x, and it is 2. So degree equals 2. And the, um, the constant will be the number by itself with no variable, so in this case the constant is negative 5. For the next example, the highest power of x is just x to the first power, so this is the first degree function, g of x. And the constant in this case is, of course, negative 7. follow that up with. Now if you look at h of x, notice that there's no term with x in it, so this is a zero degree polynomial. The constant is just a number that's by itself, so in this case the constant is 8. Alright, so those are the first two properties uh, of polynomial functions to be aware of. Next up is the uh, leading coefficient, so coefficient is a number that multiplies the variable in a polynomial. So looking at the same examples here, we have 1x squared really, and then 4 times x. The constant um, is not a coefficient. Likewise for g of x, we have 3 times x, and then 7 by itself. So the leading coefficient in each case will be then, the first case will just be 1, Um, x squared is the highest power. And then in the second case, the leading coefficient is 3. So, now I'm going to give an additional example here just to uh, make a very important point about leading coefficients. Suppose here is h of x and h of x was something like, uh, I don't know, maybe x squared minus 5x plus 4x cubed um, and then minus 1. So the leading coefficient for h of x is actually 4. It is not 1 because the highest power in this polynomial is x cubed. So the leading coefficient will be the coefficient next to that, and that will be 4. Okay. However, as you know, um, polynomial functions are normally written so that the powers are in descending order, so typically the leading coefficient is just the first coefficient, but that is not always the case. As we have just demonstrated here, the leading coefficient is in the third term. Going from there, we have, um, we can just go ahead and write some polynomial functions in descending order that satisfy some given condition. So now that we know what degree, what the constant term is, and what the leading coefficient means, let's go ahead and do that. We, we are going to keep these as simple as possible. So the first one says degree 2 leading coefficient of negative 3. So we have f of x is equal to just negative 3, and then degree 2 will be just x squared. Next up, degree 2 leading coefficient of 7 and then 2 terms, so maybe g of x could be equal to uh, 7x squared, and then we need another term, and that term must have a uh, power of x that's less than 2, so it could be x or just be constant, so something like 
um, 7x squared plus 6 would, would suffice. Of course, this answer, these answers here are not unique. You can write other polynomials that fits this description. For example, here you can you can add a 5. That doesn't change the fact that it is still degree 2, and the leading coefficient is still negative 3, for example. Okay, so our next example, we are looking for degree 1 leading coefficient of 1. So maybe this h of x could just be x. And the point here is that when you have degree 1, you will have x to the first power. You generally don't write the first power, so you just leave it as x. And you generally don't write the leading coefficient of 1, right? You, you generally don't see people writing 1x to the first power. You, you would just write x. OK, so next one is degree 0. So in this case, um, maybe j of x. Now, degree 0 just means there's only a constant. That constant could be any real number, so maybe 4, that would be okay. And the last example here, uh, degree 3, constant term of negative 8. So it doesn't give us any direction as to lead what the leading coefficient is, um, but to simplify things, we can just have x cubed and then maybe minus 8, and that would satisfy um, both conditions. Okay, so some other properties of polynomial functions. There are domain, range, end behavior, and turning point. Uh, so the domain is the set of all possible x values. The range is the possible y values uh, resulting from the from the domain. The end behavior is just what quadrants the, the graph begins and ends in, going from left to right. And the turning point is anywhere in the graph where the graph changes from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. So that in mind, we can now look at some polynomial functions. They're always named according to their degree, so we'll be looking at the ones that are degree 0, 1, 2, and 3. So constant, linear, quadratic, and cubic functions. Now, uh, doing this slightly out of order, but we have two functions here. We have function on the left, we'll call this one in green A, and a function in red, we will call that one just B. Now, both of these are degree 1 polynomials. They are linear. So that's true for both A and B. Okay, so to save some time, anytime the, the property is the same, it's going to write it once. So they are both linear functions. Linear functions are degree 1. Now, this only works for... Um, lines with slopes that are slanted. Um, if it was a horizontal line, it would uh, be a constant function. We'll, we'll talk more about that in a second. The number of x-intercepts, you'll notice that this graph, um, the green graph, crosses the x-axis right here, and the red graph crosses it at x equals negative 2. So they both have a single x-intercept. They also both have a single y-intercept. Now, the domain of any polynomial functions um, is all real numbers. So we have x is the element of the real numbers. And in the case of linear function, the range is also um, all real numbers. So we have y is an element of the real numbers. All right. Next up, we have the end behavior for each one. So to describe end behavior, we'll talk about quadrants. So the top right is quadrant 1. Top left quadrant 2, bottom left quadrant 3, and the bottom right quadrant is quadrant 4. So you can see that the green graph actually comes from quadrant 2 and ends in quadrant 4. So to describe its end behavior, we write um, simply uh, q2 to q4. Remember that we go from left to right. Now for the second graph, oh, sorry should be in green because it only applies to the green graph. The red graph, of course, has an entirely different end behavior, and that is it comes from quadrant 3 and ends in quadrant 1. So this is for the red graph, q3 to q1. Now the common uh, factor, sorry, the common 
trait of linear function is that they have no turning points. They will always be increasing in a straight line or decreasing in a straight line. So there's only uh, zero turning points. All right, so that's it for now for linear functions. Let's move on to the next type, which is the quadratic functions. Okay, so here we have three functions. Um, so the one on the left, we'll call this A. Uh, the one on the top right, we'll call this B. And the third one, we'll call that uh, C. So again, anything that they have in common, we're just going to write the description down once. So we have here A, B, and C. Now, you'll notice that they are all of the same shape. They're all uh, parabolas. So they are all quadratic. And quadratic functions have degree 2. Now, what is different about these three is that they have different numbers of x-intercepts. The first graph, the graph in red, has two x-intercepts. The second graph, the graph in blue, has no x-intercept, and the third one only has one at x equals 3. So this would be 2 x-intercept, 0 x-intercept, 1 x-intercept. Um, so depending on the equation of the function, uh, the number of x-intercepts will, will change. We, it could be uh, 0, 1, or 2 in the case of quadratic functions. On the other hand, the number of y-intercepts it's just going to be 1 in all three cases. You don't see the y-intercept of the second function, but if you imagine it going beyond the bounds of the graph, you can see that it will eventually cross over uh, to, to quadrant 2. The domain of all three of these will be all real numbers. In fact, once again, the domain of all polynomial functions is all real numbers. What it's different about these three is the range. So you notice that the first graph here has a minimum value of negative 3. So y is greater than or equal to negative 3. The blue graph is greater than or equal to 1. And finally, the green graph, um, it is upside down. So it will be y is less than or equal to 0. OK, and from there, we also have the end behavior of each one. So Again, here you have to imagine the graph crossing into quadrant 1 eventually beyond the bounds of the graph. So the first one will be from quadrant 2 to quadrant 1. The blue graph, likewise, will be from quadrant 2 to quadrant 1. And finally, the last graph will be from quadrant uh, 3 to 4. So the degree and the leading coefficient combined to determine the end behavior for, for all of these polynomial functions. And we'll talk more about how that works um, a little bit later on. Now, all three of these will have a single turning point. As you may have guessed, the, the fact that all quadratic functions have uh, parabolic graphs means that they will change direction exactly once. So it will, it will change. Um, the turning point number will be 1. And that turning point, you might know it as the vertex. Okay, next up we have uh, cubic functions. So these are new. Uh, they were not in um, math 10 or math 11. So once again, we're going to go from left to right. Uh, or maybe not. We'll just do whatever is easiest. I think this is going to be graph A, graph B, and the graph in green will be graph C. Now, all three of these are cubic functions. So that's common between all three of them, among all three of them, sorry. They are degree 3. So you notice that they have a different number of x-intercepts. It is possible for a cubic function to have one x-intercept, two x-intercepts, or three x-intercepts. Uh, we do not have an example of the two x-intercept case here, um, which is unfortunate, but that's okay. So here we have A, B, C. 
one. So graph A, the one on the right, has one x-intercept. Graph B also has one x-intercept. And graph three, oh, sorry, graph C has three x-intercepts. Again, the number of x-intercept that a cubic function can have could vary between one, two, or three. All right. Uh, number of y-intercept, that's common for all three of them. They have a single y-intercept. And the domain range will also just be all real numbers. So x is all real numbers, and y is an element of all real numbers. Okay, so the end behavior for these graphs, you can see that the first graph, um, the one that's on the right here, actually comes from quadrant 3 to quadrant 1. The second graph, the blue graph, um, again comes from quadrant 3 into quadrant 1. And the graph um, that's in green actually comes from quadrant 2 and ends in quadrant 4, which is... Um, different because that's the one that's upside down as well. Now, the number of turning points that these graphs will have will be either 0 or 2. So it is clear that the second and third graph have two turn po turning points respectively. You can see them here and here. And likewise for the third graph, these are the two turning points. Graph A is actually set to have no turning points. You notice that it increases, and then it slows down in its rate of increase, and then it starts increasing uh, faster and faster again. So it doesn't actually change direction, so it doesn't turn. Um, so it has zero turning points. All right, so um, next up we have the constant function. Now, these are very familiar, so this is just y equals 4. And the green graph in this case is y equals to negative 2. Again, we're going to go with a and b. Uh, in terms of the type of function, they are both constant. Right, you can see that equation is just a single number. So they are degree 0. Now, in both these cases, there are no um, x-intercept. They don't cross the x-axis. The number of y intercept for both cases is 1. The domain, now what's interesting is it, well actually the domain is just all real numbers. x is all real numbers. Sorry, x is an element of the real numbers. And then the range, um, no matter what happens, y equals 4 will always have a range of just 4. And then the um, y equals negative 2, the range is just negative 2. All right. End behavior. So the first graph, the y equals 4, comes from quadrant 2, ends in quadrant 1. And the green graph comes from quadrant 3, and ends in quadrant 4. And of course, neither of them have any turning points. So that's again a common trait, so I'm just going to write 0 there. All right. Last part here, we're just going to look at some graphs and see if they might be polynomial functions. Uh, the key trait of poly polynomial functions is that you notice in all the graphs we've seen is that they're always smooth and continuous, as in you, you can draw the entire thing without lifting your pencil. So, and of course some of them would just be very familiar, so we know what shape they are. So, for example, this first graph, example 5a, this is a polynomial function. In fact, you can probably tell that it's quadratic because it has a parabolic shape and it's pointing downwards. Um, the example B, likewise, that is a polynomial function. It is likely cubic. Example C and D, however, you'll notice that you cannot draw the entire curve without lifting your pencil. Um, there's a jump in, in parts of them. So those are not polynomial functions. And of course, a constant function is a polynomial. And the last graph here, this Although it is continuous, it has sharp corners, so this is not going to be a polynomial function either. All right, so what we did today was to introduce some basic concepts relating to the um, both the equation and the graphs of polynomial functions. Uh, we'll continue with looking at more graphs and more specific features of each one.
And that's it for today. Thank you for listening.